These are all the tools. I don't want to be fighting with this thing, but the rest of that went pretty smoothly, so. I'm gonna go over to J5 Custom Vans this morning. I was chatting with John yesterday and he's out of town today, he's doing a little errand over on the mainland. But he said I could pop by the shop and uh, drive my van in there and do whatever I need to do with my van. That's my shop space right there, guys, which is mostly a storage unit for the time being. I'll fill you in on some of that because some of you guys have been watching my channel for a while now. You know that I acquired that and I'm renting that space out. Um, but I'm not fully using it as a shop at this point in time. I'm just storing stuff in it right now. I don't know what I need exactly, so I'm just grabbing all my van building stuff and uh, bringing that, sticking that in the van. I think uh, uh, it's, a, it's a box of van stuff too. John has a lot of this kind of stuff down in the shop anyway, but. This is kind of exciting, man. Uh, <laughs> I haven't done anything to my van in a while, so this will be fun. Ooh. Here we go, and it already looks like John's got a few van projects on the go down there. He's been uh, busy, work's been picking up. Yeah, so uh, J5 Custom Vans, you guys, that's where I am. So it looks like he's got a, a sprinter, a sprinter. I don't know what that's called. I better check. City Express. That's what that is. So one of those things. And uh, a ProMaster back that way. Yeah, John's getting busy here. <laughs> that's quite a bit of project work. I don't know exactly know what he's got going on with that stuff, but uh, anyway, let's start with this. This is great. John, this place looks amazing. Um, I haven't been here in a while. He's really got this place dialed in at the moment. All his tools and stuff all set up there working. That's pretty sweet. John, this, this place looks really rad right now. Uh, we did a good job in here finishing it up. So if you bring your van here and you gotta get some work done, you got a little spot to chill out, watch some TV and relax. Yeah. Okay, I've got uh, Everything out of the van now organized here. So these are all the tools that I have. I usually just carry that one and that one and that in my van. The rest of it is stuff that I don't carry around with me, but I use it when I'm working on bigger stuff like what I'm gonna be doing today. Um, then over here, I've got uh, my leftover supplies from when I started my van project. So there's some adhesives and paints and different parts, screws. Uh, there's, I think this one's uh, some rags, more tools, screws, like stainless steel hardware, sandpaper, and electrical stuff underneath there. So it's just odds and ends. Anyway, um, I gotta pull my dash apart. I wanna fix the wiring up there, and I also wanna work on my fridge. And there's a cleanup that I want to do in this uh, cabinet right in this area. My heater's back there. So we'll go through all those three things. And then maybe um, I did replace this front piece on the front of my bed here. This helps to keep my mattress cushion right here from sliding forward. And uh, I had some Velcro down there before. You can see the strips are right here, but they peeled off the bottom. So I might add something more to that because uh, it'd be nice to secure that cushion. 
I'm going to get started on the fridge because that's easy. <clears throat> um, whenever I get into projects, I find it's, it's good to start with something pretty simple uh, just to kind of get into a groove. And then once I'm on a groove, then I can move on to something a little bit more technical like the dash. And what I want to do is just take this out and see if I can blast out some of the dust that's in there, in and around the compressor today and just give it a little blowout and then just put it back in. So pretty simple job. It's so gross back here, but that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm gonna try to clean up on this guy, just so that everything works a little bit better in there. Oh, look at this mess, man. All these little bits of food that have fallen down in that little space and it's accumulated there. <sighs> you got a full chili. There should be a little strip there to keep that from happening, but anyway, I'll clean this all up as best I can. Perfect. I'm gonna make up these little pieces that I'm gonna put right here look similar to that. And I think I'm gonna redo this piece too because it's, uh, it's not quite high enough.
turns out that the one in there rubs against this hinge as I slide it in and out. This one's fine. There's definitely enough clearance beside that in this cabinet. But this one, it's too tight down in there. And I just realized I don't actually need it on that side. So I'm gonna take that one out. Done with the fridge for now. Uh, it was a, quite a job there. Um, and then that little modification there for my bed mattress. So that's good. Um, next up, I'm gonna do the stuff in the back before I go to the front. So there's a couple things back here and I should just put my bed down for this one. So I'll just go like that, shove everything forward and put that up there. Uh, a few feathers and little bits in here. Could use a bit of a vacuum, but yeah, let's see. My air compressor's down in the bottom. Let's put that out of there. So that's my air compressor. And lately I've been having problems with it. It's just not putting out the PSI that it needs. So we do a little practice run right now. When I first had this thing, it would go up much faster. So, I'll just turn it off for now. So I got a theory. I, th I think the compressor might be fine. What it might be because I had these issues the other day with my max air fan and my fridge. It was, my system was talking to me and I was basically saying my voltage was low or something like that. So up here, this is my battery monitor. Normally I just look at the amp hours on there. So uh, I'll turn that on. So right now it says negative 33 amp hours. That's normally what I look at on this Victron thing. I don't look at the percentage. It says 88.8%. Um, there's my voltage. So 12.67, turn on the air compressor. I mean, it goes down a little bit when I turn on the air compressor, but what I was reading about online is that they recommend you start the vehicle when you run the air compressor. And uh, I was trying to pump up my tires the other day with a low battery and my vehicle wasn't running and I couldn't get it above 30 PSI. I was coming out, out of the bush and uh, I was just trying to air up. So I'm not gonna start it in here, but I'll plug it in. Because uh, that'll be the same, same thing. And while we do that, I'll, I'll just open this up. I'll turn on the air compressor for a second. Yeah, so now it's drawing uh, negative 190 watts. Or 14 amps. So I'm going to turn it off again. And the voltage is 12.5. 12.6, so we'll plug it in and get a charge going. This should change, yeah, 200, 300, um, yeah, 380 watts. So this is similar to when I'm driving. This would be the amount of power that's going into the batteries from my alternator. Uh, so that's what we got right now, um, and it's up to 13.44 volts. So try the air compressor now and see if that helps it. Yeah, this is, I don't think it's my air compressor. Because it just got it up to 40 PSI pretty quickly, what I normally expect to see. Well, that's good news about the air compressor. Bad news about my batteries. Anyway, I'll turn that off because it's not an automatic one. Um. I don't think it's my air compressor at all. I think it's my batteries. I think there's maybe they're just getting taxed and you know, I got a pretty good system. So uh, 
I, I don't know. Like I haven't ever taken them below 80 amp hours and uh, they're, they're pretty interesting battery chemistry, uh, similar to AGM. They're a silicone dioxide battery. I bought those because they have a really wide range of temperatures that you can operate them in. So you can use them right up to plus 70 degrees Celsius or negative uh, 40 degrees Celsius. There's this big wide range, but, um, and they're supposed to last like 10 years or something. I've had them for three years and they, I have noticed that they're kind of, they're coming down a little bit. Um, last winter, um, was I used up 80 amp hours in one day and that's the most I've dropped the system down. So I'm using less than half of the available amp hours all the time. Like normally when I get to negative 60, 65, I'll go out and, you know, recharge the system. But uh, I should be able to take it down to negative, or sorry, to down 100 amp hours. And I've never, I've never even done that. And uh, even with these batteries, I've been told that I could take them almost all the way down to like, you know, like uh, 10% or something like that. And it should be fine on the batteries, but I've never ever done that. Uh, anyway, I, what, I think what I'll do is, I don't, I don't wanna work on the batteries right now. I, I'll call the manufacturer, I'll have a discussion with them about them and uh, take it from there and sort of just readdress that issue at a later date. But at least now I know for my air compressor to work properly, I need to have a charge going into the system, i.e. the van running. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, next up is the heater. So this thing slides out just like it does on the electrical cabinet. And uh, oh, I forgot I have my rake in there. That's awesome. <laughs> but uh, I thought this was in my storage actually. This is a, a handy tool. <laughs> we'll take a look at this later on, but it's a small fold up rake. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll show you that later. I can already see that my light has fallen down. Uh, normally this is up here. So that's that's fallen off. Uh, maybe, oh, it's, yeah, it's just glued on there, but I guess over the time it just kind of fell down. But yeah, that's uh, it's looking a little, a little dusty in here overall. So I'm gonna give this a little bit of a cleaning. I'm just gonna move all this out of the way. So I'll just clean the dust out of it for now. I'm not gonna take the heater apart, but the heater is a Plan R uh, D2 heater. So it's two kilowatt. And uh, yeah, that's where it lives. Basically there's this grill that's over the front of it. That's my wheel well there, it's all insulated. And then it, it'll grab air from inside the van and then it'll pull it in through here, circulate it through the duct, which comes out right up here. Goes up like that. This uh, little 12 volt deal right in there, that's for my uh, phone chargers right here. So I just set my phone on here at nighttime and it'll charge it up. It's just one of those uh, surface mount magnetic phone chargers. And I keep my heater controller in here because on this particular unit, it never turns, like that display is always bright. And you can turn the display off, but then at nighttime, you can't see what you're doing unless you shine a light on it. So I just leave it on and I keep it in this cupboard. Anyway, I'm probably just gonna blast some compressed air in there and run the vacuum at the same time and do my best just to clean up most of that. Mm. 
this little plastic piece right here popped off that side so I need to glue it back into place. So it's going to slow me up a little bit but uh, I'll have to do that. Uh. That's all right. So I just put uh, a little bit of epoxy in there. Um, I'll give that a minute. <laughs> I don't want to be fighting with this thing, but uh, the rest of that went pretty smoothly. So um, yeah, maybe in the meantime, I'll clean this area out. <laughs> this whole thing open I'll kind of go over it a little bit with you from the batteries I've got the positive line coming up and the negative uh, the negative goes to the back of this shunt which is a Victron BMV 712 so that goes along with that thing there and then all my other negatives are on the other side of it the positive comes up in here and I've got a double terminal fuse right here so one of those is for the Orion charger this one charges off my alternator from the front and the other one goes to this this is my shore power charger so right now we're using that via this plug and that's currently charging my system up right now uh, this is my solar here that one goes up to the solar charge controller. And then this one is for my DC distribution, which is here, it goes out to all the lights and accessories inside the van that I use. Uh, this big wire goes to the inverter. Um, right now I've got a Renogy 700 watt inverter that I use. Haven't had any issues with it so far, and that is not how you're supposed to mount it. They don't recommend that, but I'm aware of the hazard with this. They're just concerned that if a screw falls down into the fans in the bottom and jams them up, it won't be able to properly cool itself off. But I've Loctited all the screws and took care of that. I just wanted to point that out because I don't want you, any of you guys who have one of these to think that that's how the way you're supposed to mount them. Uh, yeah, and then the other, the other line here goes off to my front lights, like all the exterior lights is powered off this other fuse that's on the top there. And then uh, these are the, the distribution wires for my inverter. So those go to like all the sockets and stuff that are through the vent. And then up here, that's a breaker for my solar um, charge controller. So if I need to service this, I can turn that off and then it cuts the solar current from going into here. This is for my inverter. This is the light. This is just a CO2 carbon monoxide alarm. It's just battery operated, just sits on there. And I got tape over everything because I don't like the, the LEDs to be blinking at me in the middle of the night. So that's that. Anyway, this probably needs a bit more time. I might be able to install it soon, but I'll give it a little bit more time. I'm gonna do something else while that's doing that. I'm gonna check out my batteries after all. So those are my batteries. Uh, these are by Sunil, and yeah, it's a silicone dioxide battery. Now that I got them out like that, I'm thinking that maybe I should put this little um, device in right here. Uh, this I, I haven't installed this yet, and this is a part of my new solar charger right there. So this is a battery sensor that you just stick onto the batteries.
Uh, okay, uh, the installation is going to be pretty simple. Um, so this guy's got it's got a super low draw, uh, but essentially this particular thing will Bluetooth over to the controller, like they'll connect to each other. Um, so all I have to do is put the black on a negative and the positive on a positive and we're good to go. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a wire from the other end of my shunt and send it down so that at least this device, even though it's going to have a really small draw, it's going to be into my battery monitor calculator. So um, I'm just going to extend the wire for that one and the positive, I'm just going to directly wire it to one of the positive terminals on the battery. And then this thing, we just glue it on. That part's good. Okay, I got it all buttoned up again. Uh, temp sensor's on there. I still need to connect the negative, which is gonna be up here on the other side of the shunt, but I did test it and it works. So I'll slide those back in there and button it up. fishing this wire through here right now. Uh, I'm trying to bundle it with some electrical tape to this other one just so it's kind of clean. I'll show you in a minute. It's just tight to get the camera in here. But yeah. My battery died there for, so I'll just fill you in. Um, I put the heater back together. I'm just gonna leave this hanging out in there. I'll I'll deal with that later on because I'm pretty sure it's just going to fall down if I glue it up again. Um, I was thinking I probably need to maybe pull the strip and LEDs off and then screw it up there and then restick the LEDs on. So for now, I'll just let it sit in there like that and everything else is good. That's the wire for the temperature sensor that's down there. I still got to hook it up, but it does work. Yeah. Uh, it's dark outside now, so I'm gonna kind of slowly put my whole bed stuff back together here. And uh, I don't know, probably time to go make some food and stuff, so maybe we'll go do that together. I won't be able to do my dash today, so maybe um, if there's, John says I might be able to come back tomorrow, where he said that yesterday. So if that's still available to me, I'll probably just pop back here tomorrow and carry on with this.
stuck in the past you told me and all I ever want was a home so where do you Good job, hon. It's cool to see your shoulder. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I had that call with my daughter, and it just, uh, we're hanging out for probably a, an hour and a half or so tonight. Um, maybe even longer. Anyway, uh, tomorrow I'm going to jump back into this, and, uh, I don't know what the timeline is going to be for you guys in terms of when I can edit it and have it up and out, but oh, I'm really tired. Anyway, um, the wind's up. You can hear it outside. I'm going to shut the lights off here and go to bed. But I thought I'd just give you a little bit of ambient so you can hear it. So anyway, guys. Catch you later. Here's the wind. <laughs>